her for a layman's term because she's actually a history teacher while well, professor so, at FIU. So I was like, girl, I need you to uh Yeah, I'll break it down. <laughs> so yeah, the layman the, the layman's breakdown on the situation in Israel slash Palestine is this. We gotta go back to World War Two. And this mm-hmm. is the, this is the stuff that um you know if you read it's dead. The information is dead. It's just that people mm-hmm. aren't taught the in-depth stuff. Everybody's going to be taught the watered-down version of history. But basically, right. America during World War II, the first part of it didn't want no parts of it because they just came out of World War One. You know what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and, and like all of the presidents at that time over here was talking about uh, the practice of, I think it was called isolationism or something like that. Basically, where they just focused on North, Central, and South America. We don't give a damn mm-hmm. what you're doing over there and over there. So, you know, fast forward, World War II is popping off. You got England in a chokehold. Hitler had them niggas on smash. And, yeah, he did. And that's when they was bombing the whole shit, London Bridge falling down type shit, whatever, whatever. Um, and a deal was brokered by them boys, which, mm-hmm, you know, the, 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 the niggas who know, know. So that, you know, them boys broke the deal. Like, what if we could get America to come in and help you, then you got to help us on the back end. So that's the, the, the major, most important part in this whole shit. So with some convincing, them boys, since they connected there and over here, got in, um, I think it was an FDR who was at the president at the time? One of them niggas yeah. ear and was like, "Look, we need you to go and help out them boys over there, you know, in England, cause they down bad, you know what I'm saying?" And the president was like, "Look, I just ran my whole campaign on, we ain't going to no more wars. We trying to just rebuild America, make America great, you know, allegedly the first time type shit, you know what I'm saying?" And mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, just leave us the fuck alone. And they were like, "Look." England about it's about to be over for them niggas. So yeah, through whatever little shit they did, whether through blackmail or coercion, whatever, they finally got FDR on board. But mm-hmm. the bullshit was the famous um, Pearl Harbor situation. Now, mm-hmm. some people may say it's controversial. What I'm about to say, other people already know that's in the know. This is where you have your false flag type situations where basically America. So I, I, I laid out the blueprint. America was not really trying to fuck with no more wars. The only way they was going to be on board is if something happened. The something that happened right. was the Japanese was, um, you know, planning to do an attack because they already knew that America and England were fucking allies they may not have got in the war yet, but they knew that at some point them niggas was coming too. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you might as well smash them niggas before they can even think about fighting. You know what I mean? I, and they had a two to three week uh, advance notice on the move that was about to happen, which is Pearl Harbor. So, of course, the president at that time sat on it. And let the shit go down, already knowing what was about to pop off, because that was the only way that America as a whole would be on board with going back into another war when they was just electing a nigga on the promises that there would be no more war. <laughs> so, right. So hopefully that's second grade understanding level breakdown. I don't want to have to fight, but then these niggas let Hawaii be attacked because after you have to keep it real, like 
Hawaii was recently, I think, added as like, you know, one of the last little states or some shit like that. Yeah, I remember that. So it's like, you know, I mean, they like it's like from the perspective of America at that time, it's like, you know, they are mans, but they really not our mans like that because we just got them niggas. So, you know, it's not like. Right. And they don't do nothing for us, really. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, them, you know, all that shit went down over there. Then motherfuckers got hype and then we came in and decided to finally save the day type shit and help not only England but France and then basically we had to fight the rest of the whole goddamn war really for them niggas you know what I mean no disrespect to the England soldiers but y'all niggas was getting smashed so you know that's that's the that's what it is the the niggas in France they who was trying to hold shit down they ain't hold it down enough because Hitler had most of that shit on Smash too. You know what I mean? Them niggas wasn't breathing over there easy until America came. And that's on the European front and the damn Japanese front. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, after that shit got wrapped up, niggas put the bow on it. Then them boys who cut the deal, not only with, um, they cut the deal with, um, I think, Roosevelt. On the America side, and then they cut the deal with Churchill, who everybody at least should know, even if you don't know what exactly he did. He was the prime minister of England at that time. They were like, we got America to come and save y'all ass, and now we want what we want. And what we want is to reclaim Israel, blah, 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 yada, yada, and you know the rest. But these people, them boys ain't never really been there, ain't from there. And in 1967, with the backing of England, you had an invasion. And let me actually pull this shit up so I could be a 1,000% with the actual title of the um, war. I think it was the... Yeah, basically, from what she was saying, she was saying it's really about colonialism and control over the Middle East and that most of the world benefits from Israel taking control of the Middle East because they Western powers, meaning the Western powers believe that they can finally uh, take control of that land. And that basically, you know, after 15 years of attacks being killed and colonized, you know, Palestinians fight, fought back. And and now it's the Israel, uh, Israeli, sorry, who have died. And, you know, it would appear, basically, she was saying, basically, if you're not, you know, in all due respect to anybody who is this, but if you're not white, yeah. American, European, or Jewish, you know, you know, nobody cares. Exactly. And that's exactly what the shit really was. This is, like, this is what I be breaking down. Them boys, the, the regular devils, it is a, um, it's, they, it's all white supremacy. Like, even, right. so, so, white supremacy like I was breaking down even further back, you over the last 1,000 years, and more specifically, probably over the last 800 years, you've had yeah. you've had these Caucasians infiltrate the three major religions, yeah. which is Christianity, um, Islam, yes. Catholicism. Right? Those are the big three. If I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... And, and yeah, basically, so, so, yeah. She so, was like, they yeah. try to paint it as an attack on Jews. And it and it's, you know, it's because the colonization is so entrenched in Western history, you know, that the public narrative is easier sold when it's sold as an attack on Jews, given the history of the Holocaust. Well, it's easier sold because the nigga doing the selling is them boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. They yeah, selling they saying. selling the shit to put it in their favor, because this is mm-hmm. what I we, we was breaking down before, like how I went through the history of the Federal Reserve itself and how most of the heads over from now going back in time was them boys. You feel me? Um, the narratives of what um, we have we we think is common knowledge. They have been putting these narratives out for decades and decades almost over a century that they've been putting out this certain narrative to where not only are they viewed as 
allegedly better than everyone else. Once again, just to break it down where even a child can understand it, that whatever evil shit they do is going to be excused because they are the so-called special people that they they more special than everybody else so they can do foul shit and not have the judgment that everyone else would normally get. You feel me? So from like what we've been shown in history, if if these people were done dirty like they were being done in Germany, why would you turn around and then do this pretty much the same thing to these Palestinians? No, exactly. And that that was one of her and, other and, and, comments. And, that, and that's she that, said, yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead, break it down, girl. Yeah, she was saying that um she said if people say they don't support the innocent killing of civilians, particularly children, ask them why they never said anything about the six thousand plus lives of Palestinians that have been taken thus far versus the versus maybe the five hundred um, lives of Israel Israelis that have been taken. She was just like, um, you know, overall, she's like, yes, of course, the innocent lives of no children or woman, you know, you know, should be taken. But at the end of the day, this has been happening to Palestinians for way longer. Yeah, because see, you can't have the most advanced military or one of them, other obviously second to like United States, but from a technology standpoint, they may even have better technology than the United States. Um, they they basically have one of the best militaries in the world. So you can't have that and brag on that end, but then claim that you um, are, are being the victim to your neighboring area of Palestine, which... The, you know, they ain't nowhere near on the level militarily. You know what I'm saying? These people got, um, they got all of this shit and they, you know, you could say one people, some people, some people can say, oh, well, you know, they're just defending themselves. They defending themselves only because they invaded earlier, you know, in the 19, I think, 60s officially where where the mad Caucasians ran up in there and claimed it as theirs. Not to mention the fact that Yasir Arafat, let me pull him up. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, she, she said that, um, you know, been, they've been trying to, um, they've been doing it since the 1940s when they tried to make, you know, Palestine into um when they divided it in, when they divided the states and you know um the, they basically just wanted to make uh the israel israeli um you know um more powerful yeah and like um what the hell yeah like a famous quote that he has said was basically the, that they left that he said the Jews left Israel black and came back white. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he like he knew what it was like. And this tie into like the whole thing that whole, uh, you know, white history, which is really black history, which is really world history, that little thing that I'm, you know, yeah, this is going to, I guess, precipitate me. This might even be the preview to me dropping that that series finally because all of them historical, long-awaited questions will be answered. But, um, yeah, in a nutshell, them boys, with the help of the European powers that be, the white powers helped them get up in there. And then, of course, the brothers or the indigenous or the the closest to indigenous um, neighbors that's there are tight. You know what I mean? You have, a, you have a crib and then somebody just try to run up into your living room and now they setting up shop. And of course, you every time you come downstairs out your bedroom, you fighting niggas. Every morning. 
they ran up in your crib trying to claim the whole house as theirs. Even though you living upstairs, they now done took over downstairs. Every time I come downstairs, I'm scrapping off with these niggas. <laughs> you know? And that's what it is. But the irony that... Well, I ain't even going to say the irony. Well, yeah, the irony too. But the misdirection and the irony is that they want us to think it's Arabs against Muslims. Both of them have been... Um, co-opted by white supremacy you know what i mean the original so-called arabs were our ancestors over there like they were black just like the original people that practiced judaism the original hebrews was black you know what i'm saying just like the original catholics were black the, the, like this was an entirely black planet and see when you go into like, that's why I made it a point a couple. Oh, of weeks. for sure. That's why more civilians are Catholic, yeah. you know, than 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 you know than a lot of other people. <laughs> and that's why I made it a point to break down that one um, uh, excerpt from the book that Benjamin Franklin wrote, where he was out of his own mouth and his own words was breaking down that there is very few white people on the planet, and that they were hoping to make America a white paradise. Now, yeah, if yeah, you're, now, 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 if Europe was as white as the history, you know, when I mean the history, the history books of our modern era try to make you think your boy back in the 1700s wouldn't be trying to flee to America to an establish a white paradise. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> he was like, nah, for real. that nigga went through the laundry list. He was like, he was like, you know, basically the, 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 the Germans is niggas, the French is niggas, the da, da 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 He just went through the whole shit because it lines they up. They just wanted it to be a white America. I mean, a white everything. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it's no different than what they doing in these Middle East regions. This is why you have um, our brothers, you know, even if they have hatred, even if they uninformed, miseducated, these mulattoes, the mulattoes that's in North Africa will sit there and say that they not African or they'll sit there and somebody, especially online, uh, say that they white. Now, right. To, I don't do, know. Now, and, but it, and it's indoctrined in a lot of people's mind too, Dre, because when people do look at me and I do be like, Oh, I'm black. They'll ask me ten times, "Well, what do you mix with? What do you mix?" You know what I mean? Like because so many people that are my color, that are you know that are we are black or mixed, whatever. You know they don't they they don't they don't realize that. You know what I mean? That because for so many for the longest, you know, people have said that people haven't said, "Oh, I'm just black," or "I'm oh, I'm just you know this." It's always something mixed. Yeah, and that go back to the other topic. Or the other key words that you'll hear always, mulatto, quadroon, and octoroon. That's why mulatto uh, um, changed her name. They were on her ass. When who? Mulatto used to be mulatto. Exactly. But they, there's no reason to be on her ass because it simply means that you are mixed with half, you know, black and half white. That's it. A person that's um, a quadroon is one fourth black. A octoroon is one eighth black. So basically, like you know, like we kind of discussed that one day. I don't even know if we even made that an episode, but we was talking about it where we was talking about um, like the dude on Prison Break who went with yeah, Miller. Yeah, yeah, we were, and and Vin Diesel. And Vin Diesel. That, that, those are cats that would be more like either more octoroon. You know, between quadroon and octoroon, like maybe like a Rashida Jones, she might be more quadroon, but actually she's, yeah, Quincy Jones is her father, mother is white, so she's actually mulatto, but there's different, it's just, it's like no, like anything else, it's like just different levels and degrees of that blackness being diluted, you know, if we like looking at a uh, an imaginary spectrum of dark skin like wesley snipes black down to 
you know, to goddamn Wentworth Miller, you feel me? <laughs> or Jason Kidd, there's somebody like that who's hella light. But, you know, it's all just different degrees of, you know, that black genetics is being mixed and filtered down with more, you know, white DNA to gradually lighter, lighter, lighter. But, um, yeah, all of these people are doing it. That's what that's what was done even with the with on the Islam Muslim side of the equation in the Middle East, when when the Caucasians gained, they not only infiltrated but gained uh, control of those empires. What they did in a lot of cases, and I I'll, I'll go deeper to that in another little hundred page uh, presentation. A lot of times they would have the black um, Arabs the originals as soldiers and then some of them that guarded the women or that guarded the harems, they would castrate them. So now you got these um, boys that was original, full melanated. They were being castrated. And actually, let me pull this up here. I'm here talking as if y'all could see my screen. And forgive me, I thought I was sharing my screen this entire time. Let me pull up that real quick. That Arab slave trade. See, a lot of people don't. You know, we always f um, focus on the the whites enslaving uh, black people, and then you know, a lot of times white people uh, try to come with them Fox News type talking points. Well, you know, black people enslave other black people. Africans enslave Africans. Correct, but not in the context. Context is everything. When a motherfucker just say, well, Africans enslaved other Africans. That's a true statement. It's very true. But but the context that's missing is that these mulatto, uh, combination of mulatto and white Muslims who now have taken over the power situation in that region at that time in the early you know part of the last millennia so maybe five to seven hundred AD that started to replace these black Muslim leaders they were still practicing white supremacy it was these white and mulatto Muslims that was enslaving the fully melanated Africans yeah and then like like some like so let's dig into the joint with the um castration Mm. What's this? Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. The Arab Muslim Slave Trade. Um, blah, blah, blah. A significant number of studies have been devoted to the transatlantic, uh, transatlantic slave trade. But the issue of Eastern and trans sahara slave trade organized by the Arab remains unknown. It even seems deliberately ignored and considered a taboo subject. Yet the Arab slave trade a major component in African history lasted more than 13 centuries. Now that's some shit that none of us probably even heard of it being that long, but that's what they saying there. So let's see, it began in the early seventh century and continued in one form or another until the 1960s. So, yeah, that is 13th century. And actually, I heard motherfuckers were still being enslaved over there in that bitch now in 2023, depending on what country you might be in. Let's see. Uh, uh. Yeah, basically, this, this um, 
This thing said, Israel has been killing Palestinians and keeping Gaza under occupation since long before Hamas and PIGJ even existed. If you want to end the violence, you don't look at the symptoms, you address the root cause. By pointing fingers at the violence of the oppressed rather than the violence of the oppressor, Israel and its allies are whitewashing its occupation, siege, and domination. Yeah, and then like a lot of these extremist type groups that's like in those different regions over there in that area, that part of the world, it's like, you know, it's documented. Like the CIA created a lot of those type of situations over there where you have these more extremist type groups that, you know, are doing shit with the uh, intent of making the whole group of people look fucked up. You know what I mean? So obviously not every Muslim is on some bullshit. Not every Christian is on some bullshit. Not, you know, whatever. But you have these certain groups that set up that are extremist by the United States government for the benefit of the United States government. Because it's like, it goes back to how these devils been doing, divide and conquer. So you got... You know, right. Basically, that's what she was saying. It happened on purpose. So what the Western civilization could benefit from it. Yeah, because once again, these people only make up 10 percent of the world's population in 2023. Mm -hmm. This is how they became powerful, even though they were very few. Once they got tired doing the Conan, the Barbarian and the the the, mm -hmm. the, the damn uh, whatever show I was going to say, um the fuck is the show but either way once they start doing all that that bullshit they got they elevated their game and some people you know depending on which circle might say they develop their trignology they they slick talk they manipulation game i could kill yeah. i could kill more people by getting this group to think that this other group is at them and, and vice versa get them to kill each other and better, and, and better than them when they really equal like I, I think they both slums, but I'm gonna have, the, I'm gonna have both of them think that they're gonna be, they're better than the other one, exactly. and have them just kill each other off. <laughs> exactly, that's the same yeah. tactics that they used over here that they're using over there. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, you know, from a moral standpoint, they, they, they got, they got nothing that. They have no um, high ground there. You can't play victim and be committing atrocities in the same fucking breath. Right, um, right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, but yeah, slowly, piece by piece, you know, all this shit going to be broken down. But I'm going to end this recording right here. That way... You know, this would just be a nice little intro to the white history just to really get it popping. Mm hmm The white people knew what they were doing always. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, once again, it, like, and even with that, that's a very true statement. Like, everybody don't have to know mm -hmm. what's going on. The few at the top of whatever group is always going to know what's going on, but the majority behind them go along with the bullshit like they've been this whole time, so that don't make them any less innocent, you know? Right, and it's just like the, you know, putting, like, um, you know, putting drugs in, in, in you know, impoverished, low-income areas. They was like, we don't, we're not going to kill you directly, we just going to put the shit there that's going to kill you directly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, once again, it's, you know, it's, it's a multi-level plan of attack, you know, drugs, violence, um, shit, medically, like with via Tuskegee and other little uh, mm -hmm. slick shit that they've done to poison and experiment on, on minorities without, um, you know, their knowledge or consent. Right. There's a, there, and like all of this talk, like I mentioned, like anybody who has half of a critical mind can understand and piece together that during slavery they couldn't produce enough black people. They was they mm -hmm. had they had, they had niggas fucking like 
every bitch at the, you know, forgive the language, but they had the most brolic nigga, the LeBron nigga, fuck every bitch there at the spot so that they could produce a whole cr new creep crop of fucking, you know, brolic slaves to, you know, continue working. So that was the, and they did that in the Caribbean. They did it in North America. You know what I mean? I'm sure they probably even did it in South America. But the point is, they couldn't make, they couldn't make enough niggas when they had their foot on the gas, when they had control. When 1965 mm -hmm. came and then shit went left for them, them motherfuckers. Now you have these people talking, um... World population, there's too many people on the planet. But there wasn't too many people when you had niggas um, being bred like motherfucking cattle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Non-stop. All that talk is only there because shit done went against their their advantage. They We can't enslave these niggas. Now there's too many niggas on the planet. You know, then yeah. and then and then it goes from from that to eugenics, which is the scientific racism of okay, how can we get rid of these niggas who we can no longer enslave and they're no longer useful to us, which is basically yeah. it in a second grade elementary middle school type of breakdown. You know like saying? how could we do it to them without seeming like the bad guys? And that's exactly what's happened in the Middle East. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Because the average person doesn't know most of this shit. Like, honestly, they're not teaching this. They don't, you know, obviously, they, they're not going to tell them themselves in the history books. So they don't, they don't say, they don't, you know what, what and, I mean? And, like, and, they don't. And see, low key, they do, they do tell them themselves. They do, but not but at the, the level I, that they teach it, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. They teach it oh, yeah, in exactly. like high, high school. Yeah, exactly. Nah, so yeah, we both write. Like, you write in the standpoint that they don't because the like you said if there's 20 books on whatever it is they only gonna teach you the first two to three books that's the surface you know what i mean you mm -hmm. have to read them other books like three through 20 to get the real sauce you know what i mean the real tea right. on what was really really going down and then like on the history channel perspective on a lot of that shit you know they'll give you all of these ancient sounding names that along with the white images that you see in movies and shit, you know, like some Braveheart or, or Helen of Troy, whatever movie that Brad Pitt and them was in, you would think that when they start throwing a lot of these ancient type names out, oh, it must have been white people. It was white people doing this and white people doing that. No, it was us. It was our people that was all of these people. And right. the, like the shit that we're going to really drop on their ass like it's hot. And it's going to be probably like a hundred piece a uh, hundred part video series, but we're going to trace. But they're already mad because black people is, is, and mixed individuals, mixed races is taken over. So that's why they, yeah, yeah. they be like. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in this, so that's why in, like in the 19, I would say early 1900s in general, all the way up to the 1960s, you had, which, well, not even the 1900s, the 1800s, because then in certain regions of this so-called United States at that time, um, you did have free black people here and there already. Not everybody was enslaved everywhere, if that makes sense. So niggas is like, here in Atlanta, I might have been a slave. Uh, in Philly, you might have been, you might have been a free nigga walking around because up north in certain parts, there was really no real need for they wasn't on slavery as, yeah it was texas it texas was, was the work for the last you know the south is more of the agricultural situation down here you know what i'm saying uh -huh. yeah like the industries up north at least from an american standpoint was more shipbuilding uh manufacturing shit like that so yeah yeah you know, whaling fishing so like niggas was getting money they ain't they, like you know like like I was breaking down, the first nigga who died in the Revolutionary War was a black man, Crispus Attucks. Like niggas was already here and free, but I say all that to say that those people that were enslaved, um, once they started to slowly get free in their different areas and all of that, that's when these white people on the same 
breath was like they started to pass anti-mixing laws or the term is miscegenation. Let me make sure I got that spelled out. Miscegenation laws. So I don't know if you've seen this movie, Brie. Um, there's this movie that they made a couple years back called Love vs. Virginia vs. Love, I think. Damn, what the hell? No, 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 the movie was called Loving. And the movie was based Lo on the Loving, 19... Virginia? Yeah, so the movie, yeah, I think the movie was called Loving, but it was based on the 1967 Supreme Court case that basically said that this mixed couple, white man married to a black woman in Virginia, it was against the law, and they put the husband in prison. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, for, for marrying the white lady. Then she got out. No, he got out of prison. And then, he, you know, he got back with her, obviously, because he loved her and that was his wife. And then they moved yeah. to Washington, D.C. briefly, at least mm -hmm. as portrayed in the movie. And then they were like, you know, like, I think it was probably more like the husband because he's, he's still white. So he's still on that, you know, white privilege type shit. Like... Nah, you know, we, we shouldn't have to hide who we are. We're going to move back to Virginia. Like, fuck the rest of these other white people. We're going to be who we going to be. And then yeah. I think the police was still fucking with them and shit like that. Until they finally, I think it was John F. Kennedy's brother, who was like some kind of, you know, senator or fucking prosecutor ass nigga that helped pass some kind of law to finally get rid of those anti-mixing laws in the state of Virginia. So the, the repercussions of such a law is if I married a, you know, a white woman or, you know, whatever, and we had uh -huh. children, like it might get kind of fuzzy. Like, cause once again, I already gave you the history on the subdivisions being white. And having, and having clauses in those um, subdivision HOA laws that you couldn't sell to a Negro. So the moment you mix, right. even if you half and half or mulatto, you, you pardon me, you still classified as Negro. So that means that your daddy could have been the richest white motherfucker on the planet and you ain't going to inherit what your white daddy done left to you because of these, yeah. these racist laws that even for like property, real estate, money, you couldn't get what was owed to you from a heritage or an you know, inheritance standpoint because of these racist laws that was like, oh, nah, what? You, you got nigga in you? Oh, you can't get nothing. You can't even own a house, matter of fact. <laughs> right. So, and all of this factors into that, you know, wealth gap and all that type of stuff as well. If you got it where black people can't even own property, because like half of these people that you see living um, sweet or living a good life, these people are the beneficiaries of them early housing laws that were passed that only sold the first houses to only whites. So now the yeah. niggas got a house that they paid seven thousand for in 1940 something, 1950. And them houses is now probably worth 1.2 million now. That's a hell of a fucking flip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Not to mention that even like those kids from like the kids of those children from the 1950s, the Leave it the Beaver type motherfuckers and I Love Lucy ass niggas um, who children grew up and were now adults by the 1970s, them houses are like probably around 35 to 40,000 now which is more expensive compared to the 1950s but it's still dirt cheap from our point of view you know what I'm saying so now the kids got a house they paid 35,000 for and then fast forward to when they have kids ready to get a house to the year 2000 late 90s 2000s them houses that they paid 35,000 is probably damn near worth 500 to a mil 
You know what I mean? So they they yeah, the crunched. houses and um land too. Exactly. You know, the land and the houses. Like I said, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. So they that this is how they've been um building generational wealth just by owning a house. Nigga didn't even have to invest oh, yeah. in Microsoft or none of that shit. They just had a house when the first houses was really kind of mass produced in America. You know what I mean? So a lot of our people were forced to live in where the key code word that these um, uh, po politicians may use. They may not use it as more like anymore, but inner cities. You know what I mean? That was code word for niggas. There's crime in the inner Accolade. cities. Oh, yeah, because after um, the civil rights movement, they started the projects in and, Chicago. Yep. Project. It was the project. And then you we know, call it the projects now, just but it's a project. That's what it was. You know, yeah, social and that's what scientific they did with us. project. Mm -hmm. You got these niggas cramped yep. up in apartments so small they look like prison cells. And a lot of them niggas from the projects went to prisons. <laughs> but, um, all that shit, there's definitely a, a reason. Shit ain't happening to be happening. All this shit was engineered to happen, designed to happen. You know, when you control education, finance, um, education, all of that shit, you can pretty, the media, most importantly, you can create the outcome that you want to create. You know what I mean? How we always talk about half these people on social media portraying a lifestyle that's not real, but those millions of followers of these individuals think it's real. Right? That's that's no different than what these boys out here who control the media since the nineteen no, since the sixteen hundreds, give or take, when the printing press was first um kind of up and running. You, they've been able to control the narrative on shit for like a handful of centuries. So of course they're gonna mm -hmm. make themselves look like the stars of the show because they goddamn control the camera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, man, like I said, if you don't like look for the right answers or be actually caring about finding out the truth like you, you it's it's unfortunate how you know the white people or and 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 the Jews are the ones who you know control everything so it's always going to be to benefit their narrative yeah. so it's like the world is always going to be at odds anyway and there's only going to be that small percentage like you or you know us that that you know know the other the real other piece of it mhm mm yeah, because, you know, like because said, if you try to tell people, you know, even black people like it's just, you know, they they think you're crazy half the time. Well, I think part of it, one part is that. But the other part is it's more, I think, a self-defense mechanism. Sometimes what they say, what that boy said in that one movie, he said, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So like the truth is. It, it, it fucks up their fantasy that everything is all right, even though it ain't all right. You know, like you in a fucking burning room, burning building, and your mind is trying to tell you that, you know, everything, the AC is on, even though the shit is on fire. Nobody wants to admit that the room is on fire and that shit is worse than what it really is. That's why you have these people cooning out here, trying to kiss ass and gain favor with these white power infrastructure hoping that they don't fall victim to it if they can, you know, ally with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But all these coons, at least as American history has taught us, not even in ancient history, just in the last two to three years, whatever um, public figure that you know is a coon-ass type of individual that's been ass-kissing, doing this and that, a handful of them have been turned on and betrayed by the whites that they was you know looking up to so highly you know what i mean like i think what's one of them cats um robert still who was the he was like the black face of the republican party during the obama administration era so they had to have like you know a, a, a nigga to say everything that they uh couldn't say 
to be the opponent of Obama, you know, during those during those years or whatever. So. Right. And then this dude, I think, yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, that's right. The rest of my thought is that guy, I think he recently came out and was talking about how they did him dirty. The Republicans did him dirty and that he was just, they only used him as a black face, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nigga, we already knew that. The niggas already knew. At least the niggas that's, you know, not brainwashed or indoctrinated, they already knew. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I've never been indoctrinated or brainwashed. I just wasn't fully aware. But again, you know, I'm not really looking, I guess, for those answers based off me thinking somewhat of what we learn in in school, you know, is somewhat of a of of the truth. Not obviously fully. You always got to know they lying somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then looking at this map again. A lot of ethnic cleansing went down. Yeah, a lot of ethnic cleansing went down. And a lot of um, indigenous black people throughout the different countries in certain parts of the world have been wiped off the face of the earth and replaced by those quadroons and octoroons that you may refer to as other groups now. Mm -hmm. There we go. Shoot. Let me, I'll be right back. I'm just running downstairs. I'm about to stop recording, but I think we got a nice little piece here.